Hi guys, this is Vitaly with AFT Dispatch and A2C Logistics and in today's video, I'd like to speak with you about EIA's fuel price forecast for the rest of this year and through 2025. But first, roll the intro. Welcome back. Before we get started, I'd like to ask you to please like the video, be sure you subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so you never miss a single release of our videos, where every Friday we're talking about something that could benefit you in your trucking businesses, your trucking careers, as well as cover the lows we've successfully booked for our customers, consisting of leased on owner operators and carriers operating under their own MC authorities running under our truck dispatch services. As always, guys, big, big thank you for all the likes you provided in all the previous videos. Please do keep them coming and let's talk about the fuel price forecast for the rest this year, the EIA or the Energy Information Administration publishes fuel pricing for different parts of the country, different regions, uh, a very large data set going back very, very uh, long, a very long time, and it breaks it down to different fuel types. So uh, a lot of good information publicly available. I certainly encourage you guys to take a look at that. It may be very useful for you in uh, kind of charting out the, the future, the planning for the future as fuel prices uh, vary and uh, fluctuate. So without further ado, let's jump in with the, the ultimate synopsis for this video and what the EIA is saying for the rest of this year in 2025 is that you should expect higher oil pricing and uh, ultimately crude and more specifically Brent Q, uh, crude oil is to increase to 87 bucks a barrel by the end of this year, 2024. Now we're going to look at both, you know, production and consumption, but I also want to look at pricing so that maybe you guys can at least uh, plan for the remainder third uh, quarter as well as fourth quarter and then maybe get into 2025 specifically for truckers now let's jump into the production information OPEC plus their production is being cut uh, the reduction is going to create uh, you know a, a shortage in the global inventories uh, through early 2025 so I'm thinking maybe first quarter right global fuel consumption so now we're on the consumption side the consumption is rising. So there's a production cut, a reduction, and a rise in consumption globally. Demand is expected to grow both in the rest of 2024 and through 2025. Makes sense so far. Now let's go regional or at least national. The US oil production is increasing. So very, very good news. Uh, it is expected to rise in 2024, again, the rest of this year and in 2025. And this brings us to a very important point for gas prices. Now, consumers, there's a ton, a ton more folks out there driving gas uh, engines, internal combustion engines, and uh, gas prices are uh, uh, often used in a polit political arena, especially during election years. And so what's interesting is that U.S. oil production is increasing while global uh, production is being cut and consumption is increasing. Yet what they're saying, the EIA, is that while oil prices rise, gas prices will remain lower than in 2023. So certainly a major respite and where we'll definitely take what we can get. But, you know, it might be used being used as a tool. Uh, nonetheless, let's jump into something you guys have been waiting for is diesel prices. So truckers, carriers, owner operators, all you guys, you know, use diesel. And what they're saying is to expect diesel to average 377 a gallon in the third quarter of 2024. 379 a gallon by the end of this year, 2024. But they're also saying that it will stay below $4 throughout 2025. So maybe use that information to kind of plan ahead. Jumping forward to natural gas prices, they're saying they will remain low in 2024, but to expect an increase in 2025, uh, the big loser or for some would be a winner is jet fuel prices they're expected to increase lots of summertime travel and uh, for truckers something to keep in mind is that the higher jet fuel prices are increasing the cost of air transport so that might be a boon for the trucking industry and finally uh, electricity prices uh, they're saying there is uh, a slight increase about one percent uh, for residential customers however this increase is the lowest growth since 2020 so certainly something you know some good and some bad uh, I would say generally decent news and uh, I would again strongly recommend looking at the EIA website making it a habit to look into that look at the different regions you're gonna start noticing some patterns you're gonna be able to run through the certain areas and maybe benefit from saving on fuel costs because ultimately that's your biggest expense in 
and trucking. Nonetheless, guys, we'd love to hear from you. Uh, please leave your comments in the comment section below. Smash the like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so. For now, I'm gonna switch over the camera. We'll look over the loads that we booked for our customers and I'll see you guys in just a moment. Welcome back, let's take a look at some of these loads. Guys, this week we have vans and one reefer. So the numbers are certainly declining and uh, you know we'll have to see where this goes, but you know the lower fuel cost might actually make a higher net for these folks. And again, everyone has different operating costs and that's the reason why we go off of gross numbers so you can compare to your gross numbers as your uh, operating costs, your expenses are going to certainly differ for each and every one of these folks. Uh, nonetheless, let's go ahead and start off with Milagres. He's our reefer carrier for this week. Coming out of Enfield, Connecticut, going to Wright City, Missouri. It's a 40,000 pound beverage load. It's a dry load. The reefer stayed off on this one. Uh, it's 1,139 loaded miles, booked at 1,600 bucks. Got them out of there for a buck 40. But then it kind of starts making sense. Tripped in uh, Missouri, going to Streetsboro, Ohio with a 14,000 pound light load of uh, L'Oreal pro uh, products, 60 degrees continuous on a reefer, 745 loaded miles at 2,000 bucks, got them 268 a loaded mile. Then Willard, Ohio, coming out to Indianapolis, or in Indianola, Mississippi, with a 30,000 pound load of produce, cabbage, zucchinis, corn, cucumbers, 36 uh, degrees uh, continuous on a reefer, 800 miles at 1785, got them 223 a loaded mile, and finished off at uh, Oakland, Mississippi, coming out to Logan Township, New Jersey, it's a 40,000 pound load of food products, negative 10 on a reefer, 1,072 loaded miles, $2,700 booked, got them 252 a loaded mile coming out to Jersey. I think they did a fantastic job, uh, both in Lagres as well as dispatch. An excellent gross for the reefer, Friday to Friday, seven days on a road, $8,085 in gross, 3,756 loaded miles at 215 a loaded mile. Again, breaking $8,000 for seven days, a fantastic job. Certainly not letting up. Moving on to a dry van, Dave is a driver. In fact, I think the rest of them are gonna be uh, dry vans as well. David's coming out of Dumas, Arkansas, coming out to College Park, Georgia with a 43,000 pound load of dog pet food. Uh, 488 loaded mile, 1400 bucks, booked at 287 per loaded mile. Atlanta, Georgia to Kentwood, Louisiana was the next one. Also 43,000 pounds of plastic bottles this time. 478 loaded miles at 930 bucks. Got him buck 95 on that one. And then right out of New Orleans, Louisiana to Brownwood, Texas with a 32,000 pound load of salmon. Uh, it was dried, so it could run in a dry van. It was 72 uh, totes of dried salmon, 621 loaded miles, booked at 1450, got him 233 a loaded mile, and he finished off at Abilene, Texas, coming out to Davisville, West Virginia. It's a 19,000 pound load of consumer goods, 1,305 loaded miles, booked at $2,700. That got him 207 a loaded mile. So it's gonna be a little tough coming out of West Virginia. I imagine they'll have to do some deadheading or maybe they'll pick something up, but nonetheless, a very impressive uh, week, dry vans. Uh, grossed $6,480 uh, gross, ran 2,892 loaded miles, a 224 loaded mile, uh, only 176 deadhead miles in total, so very, very profitable uh, week for David. Excellent job. Moving forward, another dry van, Eric's the driver, coming out of uh, Colony, Wyoming. Tough spot, coming out to Loveland, Colorado. Makes sense. 41,000 pound load of cat litter, 373 uh, loaded miles, booked at 1,300 bucks, got him 340 a loaded mile. It's a lot of cat litter. Uh, Littleton, Colorado uh, to Washburn, Wisconsin was the next one. Now coming out, did a great job, I would say. 43,000 pounds of furniture pieces. Uh, it's a uh, palletized, boxed, and wrapped. Good to go. 1,073 uh, loaded miles, booked at 2,100 bucks. Did a great job getting them out of there for buck 96 a loaded mile. And prior to that, too, Colony, Wyoming, uh, the 349 a loaded mile. An excellent job coming out to Colorado. Next, he did uh, Delaware, Mon uh, Minnesota, coming out to Hannibal, Missouri. It's a 10,000 pound load of packaging material, 564 loaded miles, booked at 1125. Got him a buck 99 on that one. Finished off strong at Quincy, Illinois to Flora, Mississippi. It's a 40,000 pound load of air conditioners, all crated, all boxed, good to go. 605 loaded miles at 1500 bucks, get you 248 a loaded mile. So Eric did a great job, 6,025 loaded miles booked at uh, 230 a loaded mile, around 2,615 loaded miles, only 154 deadhead miles uh, in this sense. So 230 a loaded mile in a, in a drive in this market, 
and did a great job ending up in Mississippi for some good money. So great job there. Let's take a look. Next one, we got Oscar, also dry van, uh, Tilden, Texas to Mar uh, Martinsburg, West Virginia. 45,000 pound load of recycling products, 1,611 loaded miles, booked at 3405, got them to 11, a loaded mile. Then Greencastle, Pennsylvania to Olay, Kansas with some roofing uh, material, 43,000 pounds in a trailer, 1,001 loaded miles at 1,650, got them a buck 65. Like I said, West Virginia, tough market. Uh, so uh, let's take a look. And then the final was Sedalia, Missouri, going to Little Rock, Arkansas. It's a 35,000 pound FAK load, uh, 326 loaded miles, booked at 950, got on 291 a loaded mile. So an excellent job there. Average amount, did quite well and still limited the deadhead. Well done. Tuesday to Tuesday, $6,005 in gross, seven days on a road, 2,938 loaded miles, booked at 204 a loaded mile. And get this, with all that trouble, only 126 uh, deadhead milestone. Excellent. Absolutely excellent job for everyone involved. So uh, let's take a look here. Next, we got Aaron drive in coming out of Verona, Missouri to Covington, uh, Virginia. It's a 42,000 pound load of nutritional products, 900 miles on the dot booked at 2350, got them 261, a loaded mile. Then Salem, uh, Virginia to Frederick, Colorado, long, long run, 42 and a half uh, thousand pounds of loads. Uh, chemical products, non hazmat, 1,548 loaded miles, $2,900 booked, got them buck 87 uh, per loaded mile. Then Oakley, Kansas to Rawls, Texas, uh, 42,000 pound load of soil nutrients, 414 loaded miles at 1,050, got them 254 loaded mile. Helped get them a good average Wednesday to Wednesday, seven days on a road, $6,300 in gross, 2,862 loaded miles and got that a 220 a loaded mile an absolutely excellent job now last but not least certainly coming out of uh, high point north carolina going to rapid city south dakota driver on this one's michael pulling a uh, drive in 37,000 pounds of miscellaneous products or fak 1644 loaded miles at 2775 got him buck 69 a loaded mile there then Bell Force, South Dakota to Detroit, Michigan. It's a 45,000 pound load of building materials, 1,248 loaded miles booked at 2,250. Got them buck 80 on that one, loaded mile. Then Mommy, Ohio to Omaha, Nebraska, 40,000 pound load of uh, food products, 685 loaded miles booked at 1350, got them uh, buck 97 on that one. All in all, ran seven days, Thursday to Thursday, gross and impressive, $6,375 in gross, ran 3,577 loaded miles at a buck 78 average, and uh, also only managed uh, managed to only get 122 deadhead miles, so which is fantastic for both uh, the driver and dispatch. So an excellent number, $6,375 in gross, 3,577 loaded miles. Excellent job, sir, and everyone involved. Welcome back and thanks for sticking around. Guys, as you can see, both gross and rate per mile have certainly decreased, especially if you watch last week's video. However, what you have to keep in mind is that it's tough for everyone in the spot market, and it's to your great benefit to have a dispatcher who's actually experienced, has been through multiple market ups and downs, has a network of brokers, freight forwarders uh, who can you know, help get you the loads that you need. And these are people that have been in the market long enough where they have a reputation and you know, basically there are folks out there who can say some good words. You can take a look at uh, some of the testimonials on our website, for example, uh, from some of our current customers, from our past customers. But nonetheless, uh, there's no replacement for that experience, especially in a difficult, difficult market. So if you're not seeing the kind of numbers that we just presented to you in this video and you're a carrier with your own MC authority, your own equipment, willingness to work, or you're a lease on owner operator that's uh, looking for an outfit that will be you know, less expensive than where you got currently and bring in better dollar amounts, absolutely check in, take a look, call or text our number at 801-448-6363. Also get more information on our website. And until next week, guys, stay healthy, be wealthy. Take care.